We are back with the one and only Pierre T. Lambert. Now, there were some questions in the chat about the new color grading features available in Lightroom Classic. And for those of you who have not already done so, it's time to go ahead and update your software. So if you are a Adobe Creative Cloud subscriber, today this feature was launched. So you're going to have instant access to the all new color grading in Lightroom. So back over to Pierre to show us photo editing with all new color grading. Pierre, all take right. it away. <laughs> Thank you everyone for your patience. Uh, we had to change room virtually. <laughs> all right. Uh, so I don't know exactly where you guys left off, but what I was kind of trying to share is that color plays a huge role in how you feel when you're looking at images and depending on the different colors that you're going that are going to be dominant in your images you're going to have different feelings that can range from love em emotional um nature sense of serenity with the greens for example blue something very cold and uh, if you go towards orange more happiness more friendliness in your shots and that's something you want as a storyteller to always keep in mind so that you're able to edit for a certain impact meaning you're not just randomly editing your photos so that um, they look just okay you're trying to achieve something and tell something to someone so in every shot i try to remember that and i try to apply those color concepts to my images and now with a new tool uh, that just popped up which is called color grading, which is replacing the old split toning. It's actually a lot easier and it's a lot more precise than it used to be. So I'll show you how I'm using it. And most importantly, we're going to start with that photo. And as I mentioned earlier, we're going to go through a few. We're going to range from Chicago downtown to aerial shots in Polynesia to underwater shots, because I think it will really show you kind of the different vibes you can get from different places and how it impacts actually uh, your your work. So if you're ready, we're gonna bring out that first image, which was shot during the Henge in Chicago when the sun aligns with the avenues east-west. And that was shot at sunrise. That's our good friend Toby that Aaron also knows, great photographer here in Chicago. And the first thing I want to do is bring out the white balance that I had and felt uh, when I was on location. So it was definitely a little warmer than uh, it was right now. So around 7,200 Kelvin should look good. And next thing I'm going to do is I want to bring out the glow that was during that moment. And right now it's very silhouette. It's a lot of silhouette and a lot of shadows, but I want to bring out the glow, but not necessarily bring out all the shadows. And you'll see how we'll do that. It's going to be fairly interesting because uh, we can just like bump up a little bit our exposure. And I undershot that specifically because I wanted to get my glow and the sun to be defined. As you can see, I didn't burn anything except the center of the sun, which allows me to bring out a little bit more details. And if I wanted, I could still keep the sun like that, which is not something I will go for, but I like to have the option. So in that particular shot, what I want is really to bring out that, that warm glow. Um, it, it makes me feel warm. It makes me feel um, kind of passionate in a way. <laughs> and uh, it makes me look forward to um, being in that moment and feeling like it's an intense, beautiful moment versus something cold that I'm, I'm kind of scared of. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simply go to my tone curve. That's kind of my process. I usually fix my white balance and the exposure and then I go to the uh, tone curves and here what I'm going to do again, remember the tone curves work like that. Um, on the left, you have the blacks on the right, you have the whites and whatever comes out on this axis is going to be your output. So if you're lifting the black points up, you're going to end up with everything that's black, white, 
and the same thing if you go down uh, you're going to bring everything that's white to black i'm gonna put a point in the center just kind of to keep my curve like that so i can have a little bit more contrast in my image there we go and i'm going to lift a little bit those points and now i'm going to remove my center point and i'm going to move around just until i have something that i feel is visually appealing and again i'm looking for that glow and how it's coming out and like fading away around the image i want to bring out some details but not too many because again my most important part is here i don't really want to show you what's happening here and there it can be cool to add a little bit of it but not too much because then it's going to distract you you know uh aaron knows better than anyone else we need to focus on one thing in images and not 25 things maybe in life in general Woo. maybe in life too maybe in <laughs> life too that's a great life lesson again from photography um so I'm going to lift up my shadows a little bit just to see. I actually like to do it to the max just to see what is in the image and what can be done. As you can see, like um, how it's fading away and how the whole image worked out what was captured. So now I'm going to bring it back towards something I like. So this gives me a little bit of details here, but not too much. So I don't feel overwhelmed. And my white points, I could drop it if I want to make the center of the sun a little bit more defined. Uh, or I can go the other way if I want to burn it out a little bit more. So I'm going to drop it a little bit and my blacks, I can lift them up if I want something maybe even more cinematic, but we'll talk about that a little after, or I can bring it down if I want more silhouette. I'm going to lift it up a little bit. Here we go. I'm kind of happy with those uh, quick edits. So if we look at before, after, I'm basically bringing out a lot of light in that image and that really glowy feel which is something that I was going for. So then you can play around. I like to play around a little bit with clarity, but just a tiny bit. Texture is also a really cool tool if you want to add texture, but in that, in that particular um, image, it doesn't really make sense to me. Dehaze is not going to be helpful, but it will be helpful underwater in just a second. Next is going to be our HSL. Um, so. HSL, what does it stand for? Hue, saturation, luminance. And that's where you start your work with the colors. That would be actually the second step, I would say, because the first start is going to be on your white balance. But when you fix your white balance, you want to have something that makes sense specifically for the skin color. You want to have your skin color to be accurate to reality so that it does. gives you my vision here is to bring out the warmth of the sunrise. And for that, we're going to have to obviously increase a little bit the dominance on the orange tones and the red tones and kind of drop everything else. Although, as you may realize, there is almost nothing right now uh, except orange and red, which is a great image to work with because it is a little easier. So here on the hue, you can either bring the red towards the um, red, more, more magenta or more orange. And as you can see, you can, I always encourage anyone to just slide them to extremes just to see what is being affected in your images. Is it the center part of the sun or is it the glow around? And as you can see, it's clearly towards the glow versus the center. So what we're going to do, we're going to bring it a little bit towards or orange here. And then the orange is already the way we want it. So we don't have to change anything. Yellow, I'm going to push it a little bit towards my orange. I could bring it towards uh, the green, but I, th I think it looks a little bit unnatural after. And since we're going for orange, um, let's bring the yellows towards the orange. Green, there should be no green here. You can see nothing changes. Um, aqua and blue, let's see if there is an, nope, there is none of them here present in the image that you can really see. So next thing I would do is, because I'm kind of happy with that, I would just go to the saturation. And if I want to boost a little bit the orange, which doesn't look good to me, or if I want to drop it down on the opposite, but then it looks a little bit too dull in my opinion. So I'm going to tweak a little bit and drop it a tiny bit here. And I'm going to increase a little bit the saturation in the red with, and why in the red? Because again, we had that red glow around the orange in a way. So if I increase a little bit the saturation, it's going to make that glow a little bit more present. So if we look at before, after with the HSL, we can see it's subtle, 
but we have a little bit more of an orange feeling and I feel like we mi we we lost that kind of weird transition here in the sky that looked that looked a little bit um, faded not faded but like it's like someone painted orange there I didn't like it too much uh, luminance is where you're gonna be able to make a color brighter or not as you can see if you drop the orange you can clearly notice that most of your images has orange in it what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring it up a little bit here we go now I'm kind of happy with that but what I realized is that by bringing up a lot of light I also lost that harsh contrast I had in that image so I'm just gonna go and tweak a little bit this part and my shadows right there and that looks a little bit better to me so already before and after we have that image with a little bit more punch uh, we have more glow we have more of the orange feel I'm gonna bring up my clarity a little bit more and I want to show you if I were to increase the dehaze we could get more of the silhouettes and we could get the sun also but um, I still still like my glow <laughs> so now we're gonna go to the color grading panel and here it's gonna be interesting you can go completely two different routes you can stay the way you are right now meaning we have a, an image that's kind of uh, orange it's kind of soft you don't you have very monochromatic on the orange and a little bit of the black and that's it but if you want it you could also add something that a uh, I will call a little bit cinematic where you change your shadows to cast a little bit more blue in your shadows and this is how it will work so those three circles are helping you change the colors in the midtones the shadows and the highlights and if you remember the split toning it was only allowing you to do that uh, either in the shadows or in the highlights and there was like no midtones and there wasn't uh, the luminance possible you couldn't like adjust the luminance for each one of those and that's where it's so powerful so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring a little bit just to show you what happens a little bit of blues in my shadows and here we go Tech. so and then you can shift the luminance of your image and you see it's it's very it's very subtle because that image has so much glow in it like the sun was hitting directly the lens so it really flares into and you have the orange like being spread out everywhere in that image so even when you add the blue it's still hard to to tell so what you can do is you can then change the luminance to make those shadows darker or lighter and if i bring them very light then you can see the influence of that color right and some people would actually maybe even work with that for me it's way too soft so I'm going to bring it down here we go to something like that and then we're going to work with our highlights and the highlights I want to bring them a tiny bit towards the orange here we go even more orange just because that's kind of what I'm going for on that image and actually a little less here so the outside circle allows you to choose a color that you want to induce and the inside circle allows you to change the saturation level of that color that you chose so if I go all the way it's gonna be full saturation and if I reduce it's gonna be more towards the whites and here again I can reduce or increase those highlights in the highlights then we have the midtones do we want to do something with the midtones do we want to change them I will say in that case I wouldn't change too much but I might bring bring down a little bit the midtones and here we go it's the last good. thing hey peter yeah. i got a question for you while we're going here mm -hmm. uh so color grading obviously we've had split toning in lightroom in the past our yeah. new color grading wheels are brand new to lightroom and you guys may recognize them they're similar to other uh features like in premiere the lumetri panel uh but my question to you pierre is do you recommend editing your entire image before getting into color grading or do you want to start off with color grading i think it's a great question because it's it could be both ways if you know you'll never go back uh what do i mean by that if you know you're only gonna have one specific type of of way of editing that image 
then sure you could almost start with your with your colors only if you did your white balance first because then if you change that that will mess up everything else in your mm -hmm. image so always start but, with white balance yeah but in terms of like um curves and all that you could do the colors first but remember when you change the curves you also affect a little bit the saturation meaning if i drag down as you can see my curve it's more it has a stronger s curve contrast but then the saturation looks also increased the perception is way more increased versus here i have something soft and i know exactly what i'm what i'm tweaking totally. i'm not going back to that panel totally for, that makes sense for, yeah, for me, that's kind of important, especially because I always create different versions of the same image because we could go if I create a virtual copy uh, by pressing command and then apostrophe, I could also reset that image and be like, you know what? I want to go another way and just apply one of my my classic preset that I created for something else. And that's all I want to do. But if I want to compare it, if I want something more cinematic, then I'm able to go back to those images and start with a base that's similar and I could create that another virtual copy here and be like, you know what? I want to be way more drastic with my blues and the shadows. Here we go. And I'm going to make it a little bit softer even. And then I can compare now three versions very easily. So that's why if you if you nail your base first, then you can really work from there. And I find it a lot easier to to tweak and adjust based on what you're trying to to share with people. That one feels a lot, I will say like a little bit like a movie, but also a little bit cooler. That one feels uh, warmer to me. And that one feels more like a photo versus a movie. If that makes sense, where it's like very contrasted. If you saw a movie like that, that would be kind of weird. But those two are much more cinematic in my opinion. So at this point, when you have a couple different variations of the same image, where do you go next? Do you send these to friends? Do you look at your mobile devices? Do you take a, a popular opinion? How do you decide which is the version that you're going to publish? And then do you ever publish different versions in different places? That's a great question. So the best way is to have friends. Uh, <laughs> in general, in life. <laughs> in, Yay, friends. In li new life tip. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> friends. No, what, what I mean by that is have friends and let them know what you're going for and then okay. suggest them images. Why? Or you can do it another way and you like share them two variations or three and you ask them what they feel depending on different images, not which one they prefer, more like what they feel. And that way you can adapt and see if your vision matches what some other people might get from it, which at the end of the day, you know, you might be a great writer, but if no one understands your writing, uh, there's still a disconnect here. So the same as a photographer, if you're a great photographer in your mind, but no one gets your images, then there's a disconnect with, with the, your viewer. And I think you want to connect that, especially if you're trying to tell stories, you want to really have an impact around it. Yeah, really, really good point. So out of these three, which is the one that you would move forward with? If I were... So and that's where medium comes into place. If it's more just for my Instagram currently, which is still very contrasted, I will go for the middle one. If I'm going for a blog post, if I'm going for more publication, I will probably go on that one. And if I'm trying to edit a video, I'm going to use that image as a reference and try to match the tones in the video. If I'm doing like a short cinematic clip, for example. Very, very cool. It's so cool how you can take one image and get so much different variation. Right. And then imagine we, we could even change the white balance or like so many other things. Forever and ever. <laughs> cool. Forever let's and ever. let's see know. how these techniques apply on our next image here because we've got a totally different lighting conditions, totally different subject material. I'm interested to see what you're going to do here. Yeah. So that image was shot at sunrise uh, in French Polynesia on an island called Morea. The new episodes, I think, should be out tomorrow. And it's going to show you the behind the scenes when we shot that. And it's going to be really fun because the, the one thing that I want to portray in that image, you have to realize is that little boat right there in the bay, but kind of like poking out in the middle of that that patch of light in the bay, right? So we are getting the sun to reflect here. But if you look here, there's like zero reflection because the mountain is still cutting it. Here, the sun is peeking through. We're starting to have some glow on the water and that makes our 
a sailboat called Agape, by the way. Uh, shout out to my friends uh, who, who have that sailboat. Uh, and it makes it stand out. So my goal is going to make the boat stand out and bring out that warm feeling of the sunrise also. Yet still keeping something kind of drastic where you can see the mountains and you can have that feeling that uh, it's steep, it's adventurous. Something is, is pretty is happening basically in the image. So again, first thing, I'm going to bump up a little bit my exposure just to match what I have in mind, um, but not too much. And you'll see why, because this part of the image is not going to be too interesting in my opinion. Now I'm going to bump up my white balance a little bit. Here we go. I think we're going to be good here. And as you can see, we have a lot of greens in that image right there. And there's also some cool mist uh low on the ground and the next thing then we're gonna do again is gonna work with or tone curve and what i want to do is really make it drastic so i'm gonna kind of go for something very contrasted here so here we go bring it like that boom i kind of like that that might be a little bit too much here we go if we come back up and then adjustments here so here you can choose as a photographer do you want to blow out those highlights or do you want to recover them i don't know how you feel aaron like in general if you like to blow out highlights uh in general i <laughs> i try to get as much information in my pictures as possible i'm bracketing all the time i'm just i'm doing whatever i can to make sure that i've got all the information from shadows midtones and highlights that's so interesting because I'm with you when I take the photo, but when I edit it, I'm actually, this is too distracting. I need to get rid of it. So here I'm going to bring a little bit my blacks. And just if we look at before after with just or like tiny adjustments, the photo looks already, in my opinion, cooler. It It is a little bit nicer and it, it's a little bit more punchy to look at. Now we'll be working on the HSL and the color gradings right there and the other thing we want to do before that is going to be removing those boats. And I also want to reframe a little bit that image. What do I mean by that is I want to bring out more attention towards that part of the image and less around here. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take the brush tool and I'm going to be painting. I'm going to press O to see where I'm painting. So you guys can see also, I'm just going to paint like kind of like grossly around here. I'm going to press option and delete a little bit. Here we go. And again, my goal is to do a, a very average job here because I don't need to be super precise on the first pass. And I'm going to just drop down a little bit my exposure and most importantly, my shadows. And if you're wondering what it does, basically it helps you recenter here. Mm -hmm and get less distracted by, by the rest. Now, if I look at it, I feel like I went a little bit too far on that side. So I'm going to remove a little bit. Here we go. And now it kind of looks like that. So this is the part where I really want to play with the light. This is where I kind of want to keep negative space being in the shadows. And for those boats, especially if you're printing, you probably want to clone them out. You could uh, just paint them in black, especially if the rest of your image is black but you'll have to check depending on the printer and the, the, the paper you use, how much detail you'll get back in those, in those shadows. So it's not always a good idea to just paint them black. And when I say paint them black, I just mean lower the exposure around those points. Right. Um, or you could use the healing or the clone stamp. Yeah. Right now I'm using the healing, which is doing an okay job. Just yeah. Pick that up here. And I think so why are you getting rid of all these other little boats? So the reason I'm doing that is because they look like little dots there and it doesn't really match the, it doesn't make sense considering we're in the darkness, right? So it looks like kind of dots of light. I'm kind of confused why they're here, especially if you want the most important part to be that boat and not the others. So it's like, take them out. They're not adding anything to my image. So anything mm -hmm. that's not adding, in my opinion, should go away. 
Uh, sorry, everyone. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> You're yeah. not adding anything on Earth. No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> well, if you have a clear focal point in your image, it's really important to help your viewers <laughs> see that focal point as well. Absolutely. So now I'm going to do another thing. I'm going to create a radial filter right there. And I'm going to increase a little bit my highlights, as you can see, to bring out that boat a tiny bit more again and a little bit of clarity. And you see what clarity is doing? It's making it really, really stand out. Uh, maybe too harsh. So you have to be like super soft with it. And <coughs> that's gonna be pretty good. Then we're gonna add a gradient filter right here. And this is going to make my glow a little bit more glowy, if mm -hmm. that makes any sense. It's going to be for those rays of light coming in. I want to see first if I can recover those rays, accentuate them. So we'll see. Sometimes clarity helps with that, but then at the same time, you're kind of losing the colors. As you can see, it's getting kind of washed out white. So maybe we'll play between lowering the shadows and increasing a little bit the highlights and the exposure and dropping a little bit the black point. And I think this is bringing out or contrast between those rays of light. So if we look at before, after already, this is our before, this is after. It's so a huge difference. It's huge difference. It's very, I will say, that's the kind of image that's very um, clear and in one direction. It's yes. You you can you kind of you can't really mess around here. So next thing I want to do is I want to bring out a little bit more of the warmth in that image. So again. I don't think I have much red. I actually don't have red in that image. I'm going to have a little bit of orange as you can see in the sky. So I'm going to bring it a little bit lower towards more the red just for the warmth. The yellow are going to, uh, if you go too far, it's going to look weird. So I'm going to go just a little bit here towards the orange. The greens, I'm going to leave them how they are, but I already know I'm going to drop the saturation a little bit on the greens and on the yellow, because what's interesting here is that that part is actually a lot of yellow. It's not so much green. If you look, if we drop, it doesn't change as much as if we change if we change the yellow, which is mm -hmm. something you want to be careful for when you image edit images, for example, where there's a lot of nature and you have a low rising sun, a lot of your greens turn yellow uh, if the, if the, or at least a lot of your greens have yellow in it. So uh, just remember that because then you have a fine balance between I want to keep the warmth of the sun sunset or sunrise, but I I want to also reduce a little bit that intensity in the greens. Saturation in the orange, we can up it a little bit. Saturation in the yellow, this is what happens. So I think it looks terrible when you bring it up. And when you bring it down, it's kind of okay, but then you lose a little bit of warmth. We'll work on that later. The blues, we have a little bit of blue, but it's, it's kind of hidden behind and the glow kind of makes it go away. So we don't see much as a general rule of thumb. I, I do like to drop my blues, but if you see, I think it's only changing on the boat right now. Mm -hmm. The boat is changing a little bit. Um, that's pretty much it. So luminance orange, I'm going to bring the orange a little bit higher. The yellow, I can bring them a little bit higher and the green. I'm going to try to drop it. There is like some green glow here. Um, but that, that kind of works for me for now. Now we're going to go to color grading and that's where I'll try to bring out some warmth in those highlights. Cool. Uh, let's see how we can do that. So again, go all the way. Don't be afraid, push it to the limit, see what happens. So here we're like saturation hundred and we can see what is being affected in those highlights. So what I suggest is find a point that looks good. Then you do a little before after. It just adds a little bit of warmth. It's kind of subtle, especially if you look here. And I think that's too orange. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit. There we go. And I kind of like that. I'm going to actually bring it even higher. Here we go. And now the shadows, you can do something like we did earlier. That was kind of cinematic. If you want to bring like blues in your, in your shadows. And I think the first time I ever saw that was with you, Aaron on one of your photo. I was like, oh, that looks really cool. It looks like a movie. And Blue in uh, the shadows, it's a classic yeah. trick. And, and it works. So 
you could do that or if you didn't want to go the cinematic road route but just a photo documentary route maybe li leave it like that so in that photo let's just leave it like that I, i'm not going to make too many changes here and the blending mode uh, will allow me to have more or less you see of that orange uh, warmth here mm -hmm. um it's it's kind of I don't know how to explain exactly how it works, but for now, what I understood is that it accentuates or lowers the intensity of what I'm doing. Um, so you want to play with it after. Midtones, I haven't changed anything, just because if I change my midtones, it's going to change a little bit too much in my image. And I don't want to affect it that much. I really want it to affect those highlights. Last but not least, uh, we could make a little boat stand out a little bit more. Um, like that and i'll show you in a second what we'll do is we're gonna actually take just uh, nope maybe a color of the boat yep there we go so i'm affecting just the color of the boat mm -hmm. and not what's around so it should look natural and, and it sh you should can increase the like feathering there if you wanted to make it a little more subtle yes. as well absolutely so here we go feather 100 looks good now if we look at our before and after wow, we have something that's a lot more drastic um and it's a lot more focused that's what i like with images when they're a lot more focused so Looking now good. we can do you want to go underwater, Aaron? Well, I want to do one more version of that same image, if you don't mind, Pierre. Let's go. And let's just, maybe we can do it a little bit quick, but let's go back to the same aerial photo. If you could make a virtual copy, and this time, maybe instead of trying to push the darks really dark and makes the lights a lot, little bit lighter, could you try to get a little bit more of a balanced photo where we see more detail in the shadow? So we sure. have a a little bit of a different type of image, just so everyone can kind of understand the abilities of Lightroom and how far you can push shadows and highlights in, in a photo. Yeah, so the the two things we're gonna do, uh, remember the most important was kind of on my tone curve. That's how I got that that really harsh look. So I'm mm -hmm. gonna bring up that, that dark point right there. And then I'm gonna push up my shadows right here. Here we go. That was shot on a drone. There is something to know is that it's a one inch sensor. So Oh, good point. That's a really good won't point. Be as, it won't be as like great when you recover everything as, um, as let's say as a 40 megapixel sensor or like 12 megapixel sensor like the SMS3, but uh, you can still recover stuff. So you could also increase a little bit the blacks here to get some info, or you could also remove that mask. Oh, look at that, huge difference. Yeah, and then beautiful, come back. and then warm it up a little bit. Beautiful, Pierre. It really shows the versatility of what you can do with your photos here. Yeah, so we have totally two different versions, and and the beauty is that it's up to you to decide which one you prefer. There we go. Let us no know in else. the chat which version you prefer. Pierre, we got about eight minutes left. Let's move on to our final photo, the underwater image. I want to see how you work on this because we've got some exciting options here. Yep, so we've got a few options. So I think the most interesting might be uh, that one for the simple reason that this was shot at sunrise, oh, sunset actually in underwater. And we have that really cool sunset glow going, coming through in the water. Now, the one thing you want to notice when you're shooting underwater is that the light is always very different depending on your depth. You have different colors depending on uh, the deeper you go, the less reds you have. So it makes it actually very difficult to have a special sauce that works for everything. You kind of need to do it from the base every time. So the reason I'm going to take that image is because we can work with both the blues and the cold tones and also the warmth. That image also would be very interesting, maybe in another episode, just to show you how to recover those reds. So first, and we've got about five minutes left, Pierre. Perfect, that's enough. <laughs> Pierre right, is so, used to working under pressure. He's got this. So the first thing we're going to do is because underwater you're losing a lot of red, we're going to bump up those magentas and that's going to look super counter on Twitter, but then you're going to bring up your temperature and look what's happening. You're getting skin tones that are becoming a lot more normal 
because here if you look at the skin tones it's kind of like green blue but here it's getting warmer it's getting more i will say natural in a way so then you have to find your right balance you could go higher and again you need to know your scene like what what environment were you in what kind of light did you have next thing you want to do is make sure your exposure is correct um bring up a little bit the shadows i'm gonna drop my whites and drop my highlights to bring up a little bit of those details right there and i'm going to play not only with the clarity but also the dehaze because it helps to cut through the mud in the water or like the when it's not super clear as you can see you can it makes it look a little bit clearer but you don't want to go too far so before we do the dehaze let's finish with our tone curve right there and there we go you must not be afraid when you're doing underwater photos to really be drastic on the s-curves why because again it helps you see through the water and um it helps you bring out the clarity of the water that you that you're actually losing because there's a lot of particles and then we're gonna increase it there we go and then when you increase the clarity it looks even more transparent right so voila next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna play a little bit with our hue and saturation here i want to kind of uh, increase my red saturation first of all just because there is very very few available Mm -hmm. um and then i'm gonna bring up a little bit the orange and as you can see it's not affecting much i think we're gonna have a little bit more of yellows right there we can see it here we go and i'm going to bring my blues right there bring them down a little bit towards the cyan and the aqua towards the blues here we go and in terms of saturation i'm gonna drop a little bit the saturation of the blue and so it's not too present and i'm gonna drop the luminance also so it's a little darker the other colors for now i'm pretty good the way she will stand out will be through local adjustments but i want to mm -hmm. do the colors first so again we're trying to bring out a little bit warmth and contrast it with the blue so that's where it gets interesting in that image so we can bring warmth in those highlights there we go just like that and then on the opposite spectrum we can actually bring out a little bit more That's of that really cold good. tone yep here we go and then you can adjust do you want to lift up a little bit those shadows or do you want to darken them it's gonna be again i think that's a matter of like creating a few virtual copies and choosing which one you prefer i'm gonna increase a little bit the glow because uh, i don't need to see the information here but i need to get the feeling of being lit up and overall in the image we could uh change a few things here on the midtones. I'm just gonna make them but a tiny 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 bit warmer but not by much. Here we go and I've got something that looks pretty good for now and the next thing I will do and I don't know if we'll have time but I'm gonna paint over her dress right there. So Let's do it. We got just about one minute so you got this beer. So here we go. It's gonna be a dirty job. You wanna refine that afterwards but <laughs> just to give you an idea this is what i would do here we go and now i'm going to increase a little bit the highlights on her I'm going Beautiful. to increase a little bit the exposure but not much because otherwise it looks like she's been masked out and the clarity will help here along with the texture and then i'm gonna refine and really get rid of everything else and if you look at before and after made a big You're difference big difference and that's just the beginning of the local adjustments but you have your that's... tones you have the colors you want it feels warmer yet you get that the bottom of the image is kind of more scary and you're moving towards the the warm light so in a way it goes from like uh, the depression towards uh kind of lightness and and warm feeling that's fantastic pierre we're almost done can you go back to that original graph you showed where it had red yellow green all of the different images that were associated with different moods there we go and just kind of zoom in and scroll through that so everyone you know we're using color here in a way that can express emotion and that's a wonderful thing about photography is that you can decide this beforehand you can change your location you can change the time of day you can change what 
wardrobe or props and effects people are using to get a certain mood across. And that's what Pierre was showing us how to do. And that's the beautiful of these brand new color grading tools within Lightroom is that they allow yourself to express your creativity and really get your emotions through to the viewer. Thank you so much, Pierre. Do you have any final messages for our viewers today? Uh, my only message would be focus on the emotion. That's what leaves you a trace and that's what makes you remember photos. So if you can convey something, do it. There we go. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Pierre T. Lambert, make sure to check him out on Instagram. We'll put that link in the chat as well. We've got a great lineup coming for you next here on Adobe Live with our Max Chats. Thanks again. Let's wave bye on the camera, Pierre. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.